I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. My ankle is just barely healed, so I thought what a great opportunity to uh, start doing some shoveling in the garden and possibly re-injure it again. Um, joking, but you know, you're always running up against uh, time constraints in the spring when you want to get a garden going, plants want to go in when they want to go in, and uh, you know I'm trying to accommodate them the best I can. I've been pretty careful with this, trying to not put too much pressure on it, but uh, you got to do what you got to do. What's this? Uh, this is a mouse trap. It is a lid that goes onto a five gallon bucket and I've buried the bucket in the ground and I'm just going to set that right on top of it. The mice kind of walk in here and there's some peanut butter up, uh, up on the top there and uh, this little trap door drops them in. We had some issues with uh, voles, I believe, uh, that were going after our uh, are sunchokes. Uh, sunchokes are one of my new favorite um, kind of like you know preparedness garden crops. They grow in my area uh, really well, uh, like a weed. Um, the uh, tubers that come off the bottom of them, uh, you know, are, are healthy and uh, you know calorie dense. And uh, they were going really, really great until uh, voles last uh, last winter. Uh, ate everything that I had in the ground, and I must have had hundreds of these things uh, in the ground. I knew that voles were kind of picking at a few of them, but uh, I was a little bit surprised to find out that they ate all of them. So uh, I, well, all of them save five. I had, I had five left over. So I uh, potted them, uh, put them in our greenhouse for protection, and um, these things grow to like eight feet tall. So I got to get them in the ground. So I've got this. Hopefully we're going to uh, be able to catch anything that goes after them. I've got another uh, little mouse trap that we'll put uh, in the area here, and uh, hopefully I can get our, our whole... Uh, uh, population of sunchokes going again just from the five that I had saved. I think it should work out because I started my garden with six of them a few years ago. So, uh, you know, I think it'll be fine. But, uh, yeah, it was a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, I do have some that I planted over the root cellar um, uh, last season also. I don't know what the status is with those. So far I haven't seen any shoots yet. But that could be because of the, uh, the chickens nibbling them from the top. So I've got voles eating them from the bottom and chickens eating them from the top. Uh, I gotta, I gotta up my, uh, my pest management plan, and you know, I'm starting with this sunken bucket here. One extra thing I am going to be doing with this is put a little roof over it. Um, you know, put maybe a few pieces of brick, and then a trash can lid or something, because uh, in the rain this thing will just fill up with water. And I know some people who have no compassion for uh, mice. <laughs> They'll intentionally fill them up with water to drown them. But uh, I have no ill will towards the mice and the voles and the different rodents that are. Uh, you know, vying for the, the crops that I put in here. I want to prevent them from getting them. Uh, but, uh, you know, they're just, they're doing what they do in the way that I do what I do. They're just trying to do the best for themselves as they can. So, uh, you know, I'm not out to kill them, just relocate them off into the forest. And that's what I'm going to be doing with this. So with these guys, I'm just going to plant them kind of around here. They get really big, really tall. So I want to have an entry point uh, on this side. So I think I'm going to put probably one here. Maybe one up over there. Arrgh. Yeah. This, this leg's going to be super strong because I'm doing all my standing up from this leg uh, lately. I think I'll, I'll do like one here and I guess uh, one there. And uh, that should do it for this year. Hopefully this thing works out. If uh, this doesn't work out and the voles are still getting these, I still have my insurance uh, sun choke that I have in the greenhouse there that I'll just be growing. It's really tall, but I just want to have one of them absolutely be safe. And, uh, you know, hopefully I don't have to turn to it. <laughs> and now I'll start, uh, start uh, shoveling here. Yeah. Just got to make little holes. Ah. All right. So you first. And if I push from my heel, I seem fine. Ah, there we go. Beautiful. Around the periphery here, I'm going to be putting in one of my favorite plants, which is uh, a type of uh, pole bean, or as ethical preparedness calls them, whole ebons. You can ask him about that.
pole ebons, also known as pole beans. There you, go. you can see there, the roots are starting to get all around the edges of the cup there. I really want to get these guys into the soil. The soil is a mix of the junk that was brought in when I built the house and uh, chicken shavings that had been sitting out here all winter. I guess uh, oftentimes people advise against putting uh, shavings from a chicken coop or you know chicken droppings directly into a garden because they're just super high in nitrogen. I guess maybe the, the pH levels may not be amenable to a lot of plants. I'm not sure about that one, but uh, you know it, they, they tend to have really high nitrogen levels. But uh, this stuff has been sitting out all winter, getting rained and snowed on. So uh, I think that will have uh, you know, brought down some of the intensity there. Okay, there's one. Ah, next. You off to the side there. Ah, I was pulling some really great worms out of the ground here. So as, uh, as crappy as the soil started, it is, it is starting to get better as, uh, you know, as you use it. And that's the great thing about organic gardening is that uh, the, more, the more years you run your garden for, if you're using gar uh, organic methods, the better the soil gets. With uh, conventional methods, also known as non-conventional methods, yeah, that's a weird thing with organic gardening. You, you know, they have organic and then conventional. But organic was what was conventional for 99.9%, uh, 9999, add, add some 9s in there, uh, percent of uh, human agricultural history. Organic was what was normal. Uh, you know, con conventional is the weird new thing that we came up with. So it's kind of funny that they uh, gave them those names. Con it's, it's only conventional over the past, I don't know, 50 so odd years, 70 years or so. I mean, a lot of these uh, petrochemical fertilizers that we have been using were chemicals that were developed during the Second World War uh, for explosives. And uh, as I understand it, the, uh, the industry uh, that grew up around creating those uh, weapons of war, or implements of war anyway, uh, didn't want to just uh, fade gracefully into the night after the, uh, the end of the war, so they, they came up with new... Uh, new things that you could do with their nitrogen products. Uh, you know, nitroglycerin, yeah, it, a lot of uh, explosives have uh, nitrogen in it. And uh, nitrogen is also something that plants want. So they, they figured, well, we can sell this stuff as, as fertilizer. But, uh, you know, there's definitely downsides to a lot of these practices, which we are starting to sense, sense now. Well, a lot of us have been aware of uh, aware of it for a while, but the rest, the rest of everybody's starting to catch up now and starting to understand that some of these practices that are are not sustainable uh, are turning out to not be sustainable. <laughs> I always think that's kind of a funny thing about like people talking about sustainability. It's like, well, sustainability would be nice, but you know, it's kind of a pipe dream. You know, what the uh, the alternative to sustainability is the alternative to sustainability is something that is unsustainable, which means that. By definition, it has to end at some point. And just the idea that we're having a discussion about whether we should indefinitely continue something that definitionally cannot be indefinitely continued, it, it, that's the status, uh, the state of uh, intellectual discourse here in the world, uh, you know, for, for my lifetime, is people discussing whether or not they should choose to indefinitely continue something which definitionally cannot be indefinitely continued. It seems like the conversation's over as soon as it starts with that one, but you know, people chit chat about it as though they have a, as though they have a choice. I love the, the the quote by George Bush Sr. There's a lot of good George Bush Jr. quotes too, uh, but one quote I like by George Bush Sr. is that the American way of life is non-negotiable, and I don't think he meant it in the way that I take it, but the way that I take it is that oh hey you got one of these. This is a great thing for. I'll get back to that GW quote in a second. It's a grub right there. It's great having chickens when you find grubs because they love the grubs. Hey, BB. Here's your grub. Now, he's going to want to give that to a hen. The roosters never want to eat the best stuff for themselves. They want to find some hen. He's doing that call right now. That little call, I used to think that that call meant, 
Ooh, what a delicious morsel you've given me. Thank you so much. But I found out later that that call is, he's not talking to me, he's talking to the hens, and he wants a hen to come over so he can give that to her. The reason he's separated there is because he's a small rooster and him and the big rooster started fighting and uh, if I don't keep him separated he'll die. And the reason that we're not killing one of the roosters is because the other rooster is the functional full-size rooster and he is my boy's pet. So, you know, we're not going to be killing him. So he's, for his own protection, he's in that enclosure. But he's all alone and it's kind of sad. And he's calling a hen right now, hoping that a hen will come over to take his little treat. Yeah, it's just for you, kiddo. Anyway, the George Bush quote, he says, the American way of life is non-negotiable. And I couldn't agree with him more, not in the way that I think he intended that uh, statement to be heard that, you know, we'll never change our way of life. We're not willing to negotiate our standard of living, so to speak. Uh, but the way that I interpret it is that uh, when reality finally uh, is forced upon us, there will be no negotiation with nature. When resources are exhausted, there's no negotiation about that. You can, you know, it's one of the states of grief, right? Like uh, uh, bargaining, you know, negotiation. There will be none of that because that, that'll just be the state of it. When we're out of uh, our easy to acquire natural resources, they'll be gone. No negotiation uh, possible there. When uh, the state of our uh, our climate and our, our weather patterns begins uh, to change, there won't really be any negotiating with nature. They just will be what they've been turned into. Um, so I've always like, kind of liked that quote in kind of a uh, you know wiser than it was intended kind of way. So that's it. One, two, three, four. Right here, I'm going to put another uh, little mouse trap in the area, and uh, and then I got to get beans around the periphery. But first, I got to get rid of uh, I got to get rid of this white stuff. This is some white uh, twine that I use to kind of use as a climbing scaffold for the beans. But it's it's breaking down in the UV. I got to get it out of here before it completely uh, uh, black flies are out. Uh, before it completely decomposes and then just starts flaking nanoplastic into the garden. And to be honest. To be honest, it's already started, so uh, got to get going on that. But these guys have their start. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers. If you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right-hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.